He's the director of programs for the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. He's worked on nuclear policy with the UK campaign for nuclear disarmament before moving to Santa Barbara in 2007 to join the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation. He works closely with the government of the Republic of the Marshall Islands to coordinate the educational, policy, and legal components of the litigation. His work reminds us that we're all connected, that what's happening here in Livermore is connected to Japan, is connected to the Marshall Islands. And so we want to welcome Rick. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you for the welcome. Uh, as we've heard, the theme this morning is failure to disarm. And I don't think I need to tell those of you who live around here about a failure to disarm. Uh, as Scott said earlier this morning, the U.S. government continues to spend billions of dollars annually on nuclear weapon programs and very little on environmental cleanup. That's what we need here. I don't have to tell those, who, those of us who live around the U.S. about a failure to disarm. The U.S. government is spending more now on nuclear weapons than they did at the height of the Cold War. As we all know and as we've all experienced, uh, at the same time we're cutting health, education, infrastructure. Many important human needs are going unmet because we're pursuing things such as uh, weapons of mass destruction. I don't have to tell those around the world about a failure to disarm. Uh, we all know it because we live under the constant threat of nuclear weapons not only through the direct use of nuclear weapons, but also through indirect effects such as nuclear famine that can be caused by as few as a hundred nuclear weapons being used against cities. And I certainly don't have to tell the people of the Marshall Islands about a failure to disarm. They endured 67 nuclear weapon tests by the U.S. from 1946 to 1958. They continue to suffer health and environmental consequences that really are, are beyond my imagination. The leaders of the Marshall Islands want to make sure that no one ever again suffers from the use of a nuclear weapon, whether it's on purpose, whether it's through testing or through the accidental use. That's why on April 24th of this year, just three months ago, the Marshall Islands filed the nuclear zero lawsuits for failure to disarm. <clears throat> the, uh, <laughs> the Marshall Islands filed one lawsuit in U.S. Federal District Court against the United States, and they also filed nine lawsuits in the International Court of Justice, one for each of the nine nuclear armed nations in the world. The lawsuits allege breach of Article 6 of the Non-Proliferation Treaty and of customary international law. Uh, for those who are not familiar with the Non-Proliferation Treaty, Article 6 calls for good faith negotiations for an uh, end to the nuclear arms race at an early date and to nuclear disarmament. This treaty entered into force 44 years ago, 44 and a half years ago. Uh, that's not an early date. So uh, right there, we have a violation. Uh, right here, we have a violation, the continuation of the nuclear arms race. These lawsuits are unprecedented. <clears throat> they seek to force the nuclear armed nations to answer in a public, on-the-record way about how their actions, modernizing nuclear arsenals, planning for nuclear deployments many decades into the future, boycotting multilateral disarmament initiatives, square with their legal obligations under the Non-Proliferation Treaty and under customary international law. So I want to stress with these lawsuits, it's not just the U.S. that is being targeted by the Marshall Islands. Uh, they believe that all nine nuclear-armed nations are guilty of a failure to disarm. 
uh, and really not just those nine, but also their enablers around the world. Some of those enablers are other countries in NATO, uh, countries that live under the nuclear umbrella, but uh, also, as, as we heard from Scott earlier, the uh, corporations and the lobbyists who are making money out of this and uh, seek to perpetuate the nuclear arms race for their own profit. Another thing I want to stress, the Marshall Islands is doing this as a friend to the U.S. They're not trying to be antagonistic. Uh, it, the, uh, the way that, that uh, the Marshall Islands Foreign Minister Tony De Bruyn explains this is if you have a, a good friend and uh, that friend is uh, having a night out at the bar and wants to drive home, you don't let that friend do it. That behavior is damaging, it's dangerous to themselves, it's dangerous to others, and uh, could harm an unknown number of people. That's the same thing here with these lawsuits. Uh, the, it, it's not only endangering the world through the threat of, uh, of nuclear weapons use, but it's also uh, threatening us here in the U.S. and uh, and those in the other nuclear armed nations. So you'll hear a counter argument from maybe some of the policy people behind these gates, uh, definitely from people in the State Department, that we are disarming. We've gotten rid of 85 percent of the number of nuclear weapons that we had during the height of the Cold War. But the important thing to remember is that a nuclear arms race does not have to just be a qualitative thing. It's not just about numbers. A nuclear arms race, I'm oh, sorry, it doesn't have to be quantitative. Uh, it can also be qua qualitative. And that's what we have today with uh, the extension of uh, the lifetimes of some of these weapons, uh, improved military characteristics, uh, this is unacceptable and it's absolutely a form of arms racing. So I want to uh, explain just for a minute the current status of the lawsuits. Uh, in the International Court of Justice, things are moving along but as a slow, at a slow pace and that's kind of expected. Uh, we, we knew all along that, that the ICJ is a, a very lengthy thing. It's, it's not going to be decided uh, in the next couple of months. We're looking at probably a year or two until there's any real meaningful action. But what is moving quickly is the case here in the U.S. in federal district court. Uh, about two weeks ago, the U.S. filed a motion to dismiss. Uh, they believe that uh, the lawsuit has no, no basis and, and should be thrown out of court. And they said as much in this uh, document that they filed. <clears throat> they call the lawsuit a manufactured claim. They state that the relief that is sought from the court would be contrary to the public interest. So just so you know, it, apparently it's in your interest uh, that, that we maintain nuclear weapons. Um, the, the Marshall Islands response is due on August 21st. So the legal team is hard at work crafting a 15 page response to the motion to dismiss and uh, putting to rest some of the things that the US government has claimed. Uh, there's also a hearing scheduled at the federal court in Oakland on September 12th. So we're hopeful that uh, that hearing will indeed take place and uh, that, that the U.S. will um, have to sit in court and uh, explain its positions in person. So to close, I want to talk about a few things that you can do to support the Marshall Islands. Uh, this is not just something that needs to play out in court and, and we sit back and, and hope that, that the lawyers and, and the courts do their jobs. Uh, this is something that we can all get involved in. And the first thing is to sign a petition. And this petition is, uh, it has two purposes. One is a more immediate purpose, and that is to support the people and the leaders of the Marshall Islands, uh, to, to give them moral support, that we stand behind them for their courageous action. And you can do that online at the website nuclearzero.org. Uh, you can also find me this morning and I have some paper copies if you prefer to sign that way. For those of you who use social media, you can check out the Nuclear Age Peace Foundation uh, on Facebook and on Twitter. We're always posting the latest updates about the case, uh, as are 
a number of our colleague organizations around the world, including some of them here today. Uh, another important one, and, and I know that, that those of you in the Bay Area are, are really good at this, probably better than, than uh, any other region that I know of, writing letters to the editor. Uh, this is this is hugely important. Uh, as many of you know, it's it's pretty much the the most widely read section of any newspaper. It's always the one that I go to first, and uh, it's a really great way to get your point across. So if you read a story in in any newspaper, whether it's a local story, uh, whether it's in a national paper or an international paper, take a few minutes to write a letter and talk about the talk about the lawsuits talk about the need to disarm talk about the failure to disarm and how you believe our government should be held accountable uh, encourage groups uh, civic groups religious groups that you're involved in to sign on in support of the lawsuits and most importantly i think uh, is to get involved with the local groups that are represented here today uh, there's nothing more important than working in your own community to make a better world and thank you for all that, that you all do uh, just for being here this morning and for all the work for peace uh, that you do throughout your lives. Thank you all.